In terms of the major technology breakthroughs that have paved the way for decentralized storage, uh, I'd say probably the top line one above all else is uh, widespread available high-speed bandwidth. Um, having bandwidth across the board, across all of our storage node operators and across the, the, the global network uh, sort of uh, has, has reduced the barrier of entry, uh, makes a really big difference. And so for decentralized cloud storage, where we now have people contributing uh, hard drive space right out of their homes, um, the major enabler there is that they have high speed, um, uh, high quality bandwidth. The fact that there are an ever increasing number of hard drives enrolled, but most of them are only about 25% full. You have this, this sort of environment where there's a lot of cheap latent capacity available. And really the tools then to aggregate that capacity, make it available, but also make it available in a way that's, that's trusted with end-to-end -end encryption and different mechanisms to make sure that the data is actually being stored. We now are in a position where we almost have data center level bandwidth globally. Um, uh, and so by having that level of bandwidth and by judicious use of that bandwidth in terms of using uh, read Solomon erasure coding instead of redundant uh, replication uh, and a couple of other things, uh, it, it allows us to build a system uh, that uh, will actually scale um, uh, in a way that, that really hasn't been built before. There's been a rise in peer-to-peer -peer technologies um, and development of an understanding of how to how to sort of do these sorts of highly distributed challenge uh, you know, computing problems at massive scale, and that's really what this is. Keeping track of data that's broken up into lots of pieces and stored in lots of places and constantly being created and recreated, you know, required a lot of work sort of across the technology stack. If there's any other technology advance that I'd say that's that sort of enabled uh, these widespread distributed systems, it's actually just the experience of the industry, the, the sort of combined experience the industry has had in building distributed systems. There's language and academia and research now that didn't exist 20 years ago about how to talk about things like tail latency and uh, variability across large fleets of servers that just really didn't exist 20 to 30 years ago. And, and so with the experience that the industry has gained now, we now have a number of sort of well-applied techniques for dealing with uh, highly variable tail latency and for dealing with uh, some of these issues. So decentralized cloud storage has emerged uh, as a viable alternative for, for developers from you know prior works and, and the evolution of, of a number of other services. You know, starting with um, with uh, Bitcoin um, back in, in 2008, uh, a whole new set of paradigms were were sort of cobbled together from existing uh, technologies and net new ideas. Cryptocurrency and blockchain technology is very exciting uh, in terms of making it so that people can transfer um, uh, financial instruments between themselves. It's sort of democratized a number of new exciting financial instruments. So you have existing, um, you know, strong uh, um, public-private key encryption uh, being matched with with new things like uh, consensus mechanisms, uh, such as a, a distributed ledger and the ability to have zero trust communications uh, and, and consensus across broad ranges of applications. When you take all of those sort of components and you, and you sort of rearrange them, um, what has worked for sort of a decentralized compute resource for, for tracking um, you know, digital money is equally valid for a number of other use cases. The fact that we now have, uh, we have a payment mechanism a settlement mechanism and an integrity mechanism that also is decentralized has made it possible for people to consider something like decentralized storage.